LeBron James back, baby. Dude, so I was talking. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how much sports women watch. I know there's some that are real avid fans. I know some of them, you know, just love sports. But I just want to throw this. I just want to share this story with you. <laughs> so one of my friends, I'm not going to mention her name. So you know when you're watching football on TV, you know they have the yellow line to show the first down and everything else, right? Yeah. So and that's the TV. That's that's the analyst showing you so that way you can see how much they got, how much yardage they need to go to get the first down and everything else. So my friend went to a live game, and the question she asked is, "Hey, where is the yellow line?" <laughs> Where's the yellow line that you see on TV? She goes, where is it? I don't see it on the field. And the friends were like, what? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, you know, the, the, the first down line, where, where is that? And they were like, that shit's only on TV. That don't fucking exist here, man. <laughs> like, you're at, a, you're at a live fucking game. Like, you ain't going to see those lines or anything like that. And I was like, when she told me, I was like, stop it. She's army. And I was like, come on, girl. Like, you got to be smart than a dad, bro. Like, for real. Like, I get it. I mean, you're probably not a big, avid football fan and everything else. But you got to be able to know that that's not legit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're watching TV. You're watching it on fucking TV and anything else. But I was, man, I was laughing. And she's looking at me like, why are you laughing? And I was like, what did your friend say? She was like, they just started laughing. And I was like, <laughs> there's a reason then why I'm laughing is because... That shit doesn't exist. It only exists on the fucking TV monitor because it's showing the audience, you know, what we don't see at the live event. It's showing us what, how much yards they need to go and so on and so forth. But I was like, I get it. You know, you're not big on that type of stuff. Like, you, you're more, your heart is more into, like, boxing, MMA, and everything else. You know, I get it. It's just like if somebody would talk about baseball, but they're using football terms. You know, like, some people just really don't get sports all the time. Yeah, but I just me. wanted to share. That. I thought it was fucking hilarious, man. <clears throat> yeah, I have friends that they'll, they'll talk about certain things with sports. I'm just like, I don't really fucking know. I don't care. Yeah. And there's some people that get really nerdy into it, and they'll be talking about things and trying to like, I don't know what it is. I don't know why. I don't know why guys a lot of the times feel like, like you know, it's like you you have a common like you meet another guy and you're like, cool, let's talk about football. And you're just like, so like I almost have my speech ready. And it's like I'm not that guy, man. Like I'm cool. Um, just. I have no clue what's going on to me at all. Right. Any of this stuff, nor do I care. And there's like, really? I'm like, no, I don't really. Like, but you would still have it. some common sense to know that the yellow line is not a fucking real line when you go to the stadium. I won't even watch it, though. Like, if you were like, hey, man, you want to go to the game? We'll go like that. I'm like, no. Like, well, I it's remember you better telling me that. Yeah, like, I, I, you know, it's like, well, what's going on here? Like, I don't, I don't really care. I go to, like, I went to, like, homecoming ones. But most of the time, I'm, like, on my phone because it's boring to me. Especially yeah. when you're watching like a high school football. I mean, you're like, oh, these guys suck. These kids suck. These are not going to the pro. Like some of these kids, I just, <laughs> I look at them, just like, man, these kids suck, and they're getting a lot of brain damage. Yeah. Um, we went, we went to one that was like homecoming a couple months ago, and this kid got hit so hard. I was just making fun. I wasn't making fun of him, but I was like making fun of the situation because he got hit hard. The kid came off the field and just started stripping. And I was like looking around. I was like, dude, is no one not paying attention? This kid is stripping right now. Like he's taking yeah. off all his gear. Like. It came to a point where it's like it's kind of funny, but at the same time it's like, yo, this kid is actually showing some signs of kind of some fun, like fucked upness, and yeah, nobody's yeah. paying attention. The kid took off his shoulder pads, takes off his shirt, he's like taking off his glove, like he's 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 getting to the point where he he quit, like he he was done. He got hit Holy so hard he quit. Shit. But yeah, yeah, it was it was a good five minutes before that somebody came over there and was like, are you okay? And you could see him kind of like he wasn't standing straight, and yeah. it was like what was worse though it was like it was like a it was like a, a play. That nobody really like he got hit and then like it was you know the game kept going on so it wasn't like he got hit and someone like oh and then he's fucked up no like yeah. nobody was paying attention to this kid and I was just like kind of like that's because I don't pay attention to the game so I, I can care less so I'm just like dude this dude got hit and I'm like dude this dude just stripping he's walking around like you know that like no one's paying attention to this kid and I was like dude that sucks like you're you suck at football in a sense like you're not going pro you know what I mean like dude, there's no chance <laughs> you're going like. <laughs> I, I don't even know what the divisions are. I don't know division yeah. four, division one. I don't know. But you're you're probably going to like to a small college. You're not the going for football. The <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're you're not playing for that. And you took a hit. And but man, there's there's some athletes that won't show that they've been tested. You know what I'm saying? Like they'll fucking walk off the field like that kid just to show that yeah I might have got because you know I I I'm really big on basketball. I love basketball. And there were times that if you did like a crossover, 
you know, they call it like, oh, you broke his ankles. You know, there's videos of basketball players falling because the guy's out dribbling them. You know, those things are like, oh, you know, like you've been basically took down. So they, some of those athletes don't like that. You know what I'm saying? They feel like, yo, I just, he, in his head, he's probably saying, yo, I just got smashed, but I can't come off the field like a little pussy. Like, I got to come off like, fuck it, you hit me, I'm getting pumped, and I want to go back out there and fucking hit you even harder and everything else. You know, some fucking athletes try to be fucking tough. They tough it out and everything else versus where, like you said, he could have been actually dealing with some fucked up shit because yeah, of the, the, the amount he got impact. This, this kid, you could tell he was just like, I'm done. I'm never going to hit done. this <laughs> Yeah. It, it was like, again, I feel bad for the kid, man, because I was laughing because it was like, yeah. you could tell, like, he, like, you could tell he wasn't special on the team. <laughs> He got hit and he came off the field and nobody was like, you he, good. Probably, he probably was the third stringer. Like, coach, where the <laughs> fuck you put me in? Yeah, like, he's, like, he's in, like taking coach. this off. And, and yeah. you know, it's, it's coming to a point where he's like, he's hot. He's like, I'm hot. And he's like taking shit off. And you're like, oh, you're not good, man. Yeah. This shit Something's wrong. Me. Something got knocked loose. Something <laughs> and got knocked loose. I'm just looking around, loose. like, you know, because I'm looking around, like, dude, is no one going to check on this kid? This kid's like, w- like, the team's over here. He's way the fuck over here <laughs> yeah. shipping. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's like in the process of taking his clothes off as he's walking down different places, and you're like, "That's not oh. healthy, man." Like, you know, you know, he cursed at his dad. He's like, "Fuck you, dad. Like, Fuck you in football. Yeah. I'm never playing that sport yeah. ever again." I don't think he knew where he was at. I don't think he yeah. knew what was going on, man. I think he might know have been his parent fucking was just hit. Like, yeah, his parent was like, "Damn it, that dude's a pussy, man." Like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Jimmy's a little bitch. <laughs> God damn it, Jimmy. Hey, whose you know kid me? is Jimmy? <laughs> So bad, man. Like, that dude got rocked. And the funny part is, like, the, the worst, like I said, the worst part, it wasn't like he got rocked and it was a highlight because it was like, oh, shit, man. Mm-hmm. Like, that was a real. I think he just got hit. He never expected that before. But, yeah, man, they just they just left him alone because, you know, everyone's focused on the game. And that's why I was like, oh, dude, you're not right. even important in the game. Like, they don't even worry about you. You're not the star. You know, like, the yeah, star yeah. is, like, gets hurt. They're going to be like, oh, shit, like, we're worried. We got to keep playing, but we're worried. Man, and I think I think who came over was like a water girl or some shit like that. Like she just came over and was like, "You okay?" Like that's who was concerned about the dude at that point. He's some Gatorade. <laughs> yeah, like you want a Gatorade? I got like you know like that, and it's just like, damn, yeah, I can't dude. I I can't front because so you know with my shoulder I'm going through physical therapy right. Every session I do three sessions a week. Every session I try to go in tough. Like I try to go with that mentality like, yo, I'm gonna fuck this exercise up. Because I want this to get better. I'm at the frustration level where I can't, I could do certain things, but not to normal. I'm not normal yet. And that shit pisses me off because they're like, only do cardio, no weights, no nothing. You don't want to re injure it or anything like that. So I go in there. This was yesterday. I went in, uh, I'm sorry, this was Friday. I went in there and I'm like, she's like, hey, how's the shoulder? And I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's getting better. And she's like, all right, you're ready? I'm like, yeah, let's do this. I'm ready. So she, you know, she's giving me a little exercise. And like I said, these exercises are, I look at them like baby toys. You know what I'm saying? So one of them was like, it was a, a, a loop here. It looked like a rainbow. And you had to take one ring and move it from one side to the other. So using your injured arm, you have to pull all the rings from left to right and then right to left. And she said to timer. I look at it like, yo, it's simple. But just the motion of knowing that I can't really go as high as that rainbow bar was. I could feel a little bit of the tension. So she goes, hey, look, right now I want you to take these cups and move them from one shelf to the up, to the higher shelf. Again, simple exercise. Like to me, I'm thinking baby. This is like baby games, you know? But again, just the range of motion of using my injured arm to move those cups from one shelf to the other, I could feel the tension. But in my mind, I'm Rocky mode. I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to fucking do what I can. I'm going to keep pushing myself and everything else because... I can't afford to be like, oh, it hurts, it hurts, because it's never going to get better. It's going to be a longer process, right? So this is where my manhood or my man card got revoked, (laughs) okay? She laid me down on the bed, and she goes, we're going to do some stretches. Okay, I've done stretches before, no big thing. Again, Rocky mode. I'm like, I got this. So she takes my arm, my injured arm, and she goes from forward to backward, up and down. She raises it back and everything else, and I'm cool. I'm a tough guy. I could do this shit and everything else. So she said, okay, very good. She goes, let's do lateral stretches where it comes out sideways. Tell me why (laughs) this lady grabbed it. She cuffed my shoulder. She grabs my arm, and she puts it against her hips. So in the motion that she's doing is she's stretching it to get it to like a 90-degree angle. 
Yo, my man card got revoked, Mike, <laughs> because I I thought it was inside me, but a nice little uh, came came out of me <laughs> when she did it. Yo, Mike, when she pulled my arm back, I went, oh, <laughs> and she looked and she was like, it's, yeah, I know, I know it hurts, but, you know, we got to do this. Dude, like, my legs were raised up. You know, I was flat. My knees bent, my legs up, my hip raised. And all I heard was, uh. <laughs> I let out this little grunt. And I thought that was inside my head. But I knew it was out loud because she stopped and she looked at me and she's like, you know, you're supposed to be this fucking military guy and everything else. She's looking at me. She's like, I know it hurts, but we need to do this. We need to keep going at it. That's the only way it's going to get better. Yo, man. And I left that place a little bit like, what the fuck? <laughs> because again, I went in there with the mentality like, yo, I'm going to fucking kill these exercises. I'm going to fucking kill today's therapy. Like I'm coming out of there fucking Superman. And that one little stretch, again, my fucking, my mangina came out. My fucking man car got taken away. Like I turned into a little bitch, man. And it's crazy because a little motion, you know what I'm saying? A little motion just trying to recover from this injury was like craziness. And it's fun because I think I told you, I'm reading that Michael J. Fox book about him dealing with like the Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. And in one of his chapters, he puts at the very beginning, he said, movement is freedom. And it truly is, man. Because I, like, you know, every time they ask me, I always tell them, yo, I'm on the frustration level. Because to not have the freedom to be able to raise my hand above my head. Like going to Chicago, I'm going to have to wear my sling. Because, you know, going through the fucking security, you got to put your arms above. Dude, I can't. You know what I'm saying? I can't afford for them to be like, yo, what the fuck is going on? But to not have this freedom to be able to raise your hand up all the way. Like, for me to put deodorant, I got to put my arm against the wall to open it up to put. But like he said, movement is freedom, man. And it really is, bro. Like, you don't, I, you know, we mentioned this before. Like, you don't realize how good you have it until you lose it. Even though this is temporary... I know I'm going to get back to 100% as long as I keep doing the physical therapy and everything. But, bro, you don't understand. Like, when I, I'm going in the gym now, I do the cardio, I do treadmills, I do some abs and everything else. But I look at these cats, they're out there, boom, you know, doing the bench, doing the dumbbells. And I'm just like, man, that used to be me. You know what I'm saying? Because I was there doing the weights. And now that I had this injury, I can't do it no more. But I was like, fuck, Michael J. Fox is worse condition than all of us with the Parkinson's. You know, that's yeah. a whole new world that he's entering. But he hit it right on the head, man, when he said movement is freedom. Because it really is, man. You don't, even, you don't even know how free you are when you're 100% and people take advantage of it because they don't work out correctly. You know, the proper forms. They're not taking care of themselves. And when you lose a mobility function, it's the fucking worst thing ever. And the crazy thing is, I asked the PT lady, I said... What's the worst injury of the body? And she said, believe it or not, it is the arms. She said the hip is the easiest to recover from. That's one that people will recover real quick from. The leg is bad too, but the leg is not as bad, as she said, as the arm. Because just of what's in here, it's like it's just so much more that needs to, to come back from. And the way he explained it was like it's like an accordion. He said, your ligaments are stuck together. That in order for it to come back to normal, we have to spread it like an accordion where the folds have to come apart. He goes, that's why we need to, that's why we do the stretches. That's why we do these exercises. And again, I'm looking at these exercises like, yo, this is a joke. Like, why the fuck am I moving one ring to the other side? But believe it or not, you could really feel like, holy shit, now I understand why they're doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. And the repetition of those exercises is what's really is going to get me better. But Mike, man, yo, my man car was taken away. I left out of there like, damn, is it, you were a little bitch today, bro. You left what, out of there fucking being a bitch. What, what, what's crazy, though, is like, you know, like, I, I subscribe to, when it comes to, like, to working out a lot, like, I subscribe mm -hmm. to my new 100%. And, and what, what I mean by that is there's a lot of things I can't do no more, man. I wish the back right. can't take it, the knees, like, I, I've been running and, like, like uh, I got it, I think four more, three or four more months, man, before I can get my my injections okay. in my knees. Yeah, it's painful to run. Like it hurts. Like man, and and you know, 
what, what I mean by that is like, as you get older, I think you really have to sit there and say, what is my new 100%? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's never like what you used to do before. Like, you know, before you used to work out and do all those things. Now it's like, what's my new 100%? 100% right. legitimately is moving a cup from one shelf to another. But, yeah. you know, it's like this too shall pass, you know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. I think that's good to, to recognize those things because it sucks. It's frustrating knowing that like, something simple that you can do, you can't do no more. And, yeah. you know what I mean? That's just that's just how you know how it is in a sense of like that you know it's crazy you're going to be back to normal hopefully really soon but as of right now it's like man putting putting and it's it's not heavy it's, it's not it's not the other ones right like it's, it's weak like oh i can get stronger it's like no it's movement it's literally i just don't have the range of motion i literally just cannot move this inch or whatever um and you know it's like i think a lot of people can relate with that because a lot of people it don't matter where you come from your background this and that um, man, you, you got bad knees, you can't do this. You got bad back, you can't right. do this. You got bad shoulders, you definitely can't. There's there's a lot of things you just can't do because your shoulders, you know I mean? That's, that is a big injury to have. Right. Um, but if your hand breaks, that's another thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I, th I think what's good to recognize about that one is just like it, it's coming to understanding of what your new 100% is. Because what your new 100% is is doing your PT like you're supposed to three times a week with everything you got. And then going to the gym and doing extra stuff, you know what I mean? That's the new 100%. And I Correct. think if you can, when, once you follow that that idea, mentality, your mind gets stronger because of that. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if it could ever, like, that little scream you had, I don't know what that was about. That's 100% different, something different. Um, <laughs> it was the truth. Sad. It was my uh, true emotions, man. <laughs> no, but you're, you're absolutely right because... I, number one, I w I'm grateful that I've always been active in the gym. The exercise is not something new to me mm -hmm. because honestly, a lot of the patients there, they're more elderly. And so it's harder for them because they're not used to working out. You know, they're not used to long exercise durations and stuff like that. So for them is you can see them getting tired quick. They're not breathing right. You know what I'm saying? Just little, little fundamentals that you do understand because you work out and everything else. So when I go into these sessions, I know like, all right, six minutes, Breathe in, breathe out, you know, inhale, exhale, take your time, rest, you know what I'm saying? And then go back at it. A lot of them are, they don't have, the, again, those fundamentals because a lot of them weren't active before, you know what I'm saying? So that's one thing that I'm happy about, that I was active and that I know how to fucking strengthen my body again and everything else. So that's going to mean that when I go back to the gym and I'm 100%, that doesn't mean Israel will go and fucking dumbbell presses to fucking... 180 again, you know what I'm saying? Like now I got to make sure that I change my workout and everything else to where I never want to fucking deal with this shit again. You know what I'm saying? Like I got to mm -hmm. make mad adjustments, change my routines and everything else, start doing other things that I wasn't doing before. And if it means that I got to be more reps, less weight, then I'm okay with that. Because again, this shit fucking sucked. But the place that I go to, it's, it's crazy because... A lot of the patients there, most of them have leg issues, right? Mm -hmm. Dude, this place, I'll be honest with you, this place, when I go in there, I always look forward to going in there because the morale in there within the staff and within the PT, the physical therapist, is insane. Like, they always have music. They're always motivating their patients. And, dude, they practically know the names of all the patients that go in there. So if I'm dealing with you today, I could look to the side and see in the waiting room, I could see John, Joey, and Jeff. And dude, they will come on. Hey, John, how's it going today? I'll be with you in a minute. Hey, hey, Gina, how's it going today? I'll be with you in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a quiet. It's not a like, hey, let's just do the exercise, get it done. Even the staff that, you know, check you in and check you out, dude, they will get up and they do little dances because the music and this was one of my highlights when I was there. So they started playing that cha-cha song, right foot to stomp, you know, left foot to stomp, whatever. And this lady, she has been doing the physical therapy for a while. I want to say maybe a month, two months or whatever. She saw that the staff and the physical therapists were having such a good time that the morale was so lifting that it sort of reciprocated to her, Mike, that she fucking started dancing, bro. It was slow because of her leg injury, but dude, she started doing like the little motions and the whole staff and even the PT were applauding her. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, they were like, go, whatever her name was. Like, go, Lisa. Go, Lisa. And, you know, she's like doing her little moves. But, dude, the, the smile that she had on her face because of the fact of the morale in the workplace, but the fact that she was seeing the progress, you know, the hard work is paying off and everything. I was like, man, this is incredible. Because I've been a lot to other physical therapy centers to where it's like, come in and we're going to do ABC. All right, see you later. See you next week. Bye. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no conversation or how you doing. Like, hey, how's your shoulder doing today? You know, let's work this. You know, just make it comfortable for you. You know, especially knowing that we're we're patients here with injuries. Our life is in the way it used to be, you know, and especially for the elderly, like, it's harder for them to recover and everything. But this place makes it to where, like, I get it, you're 100. I get it, you have, like, issues. But, bro, we're going to make it fun for you so that way you don't have to think about the fucking injury and all you're focusing on is the recovery. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, man, this shit, it doesn't get any better than that. And it's very rare that I find, I mean, I, have, I haven't been, like, all over the place of PT centers and stuff, but the ones that I've been to would never, never like that. And, again, it's just, like, the morale that they bring in there that it reciprocated to that lady for her to dance knowing that she had that injury, that shit was, it was amazing, man. It really was. Yeah, like uh, the big thing about Tony Robbins is saying like, what's what's really important isn't the um, like achieving your goal. It's really the progress. I mean, that mm-hmm. is very true. Like, you know, if you get somewhere, man, and it sucks and it's hard, and then like even for you, right? Like, you know, if you start getting there part and you're like, I can't reach this one, but in two weeks you can. It's a lot better than than you. you know I mean, like you just get that momentum, and I think that's very important that you start like that we can recognize those type of things. Of yeah, kind of sitting sure. saying like you know what's progress I'm making progress and that 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 will change everything in life in my opinion, the moment you can start recognizing that you're not you're you're one step closer one step better than you were the day prior, is magical in any aspect you can ever imagine in you know what I mean, uh, definitely man amen to that because before I couldn't raise my hand halfway to my chest now I can now it's getting higher to where I could touch my hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could see the progress is working. I could see the progression. And the one thing they always tell me is patience, man. You just got to be patient about everything. You can't come in here thinking that we're going to show you these exercises and then the next day you're 100%. It's not going to work that way. And there are people that come in there that they think like, oh, I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel better. And then they're like, oh, I don't want to do the PT no more. And then guess what? Back to fucking square one because you just re-injured yourself and you didn't give yourself the time to fully fucking heal. And I told them, I said, yeah, I believe me, I, I know, and I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time, but I'm, I'm here for the journey because I know the reward at the end is going to be, be being back to lifting dumbbells, back in the gym, and everything else. Yeah, perspective is, is an amazing thing, like, in all seriousness, like, being able to have perspective of, like, you know, even going to, like, you know, how hard something is. A lot of times, like, the reason why it's so hard is because your perspective is you've mm-hmm. never faced that before. But once you face it, it's like, oh, that's kind of, it wasn't a big deal. You know, I, mean, I lived, I survived. And then when you go through something else, and that's what we do as people is like, anytime we go through something else, we, we kind of look at it compared to something else, right? And so for you, like, you've never had your shoulder injured at all. Or you've never had the surgery, like that type of thing. So it is frustration because what is lacking. Now, when you do your next one, it's different because you're sitting there saying like, man, I'm frustrated. I've been here before. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I know exactly that is right. I, my progress or the next movement forward is right around the corner because the frustration normally comes right as you're about to hit a new level. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's perspective. And once you can do that part, then you start calming down once, then you can understand everything. And then it's like, cool. This is the, and then you just got to fall in love with the process because like mm-hmm. you're saying, it takes a while. Like you're not going to be hundred percent next week. Maybe not even another month. You got more, multiple months, you know, the word Correct. months, you know, that, that, that's going to happen. And then you're going to do it all over again with the other shoulder. Right? right, so you're right back. Like you're pretty much down a whole year in a sense. But yep. if you, but you know, because you're older and stuff like that, once you're two years from now, three years from now, like that's a whole different story now because of mm-hmm. you took the time to get hurt and took the time you needed to heal yourself properly. Man, you could be doing probably two push-ups in you know three years where you haven't been able to do none in like five years. So right. it's like amazing. Right. Um, you might be able to do maybe you know maybe a push maybe like girl pushes will probably be the best thing for you, um, and then you can kind of like you know like do your little moan. Actually, you know what I wonder? Uh, I'll let you go after this one. Do you think maybe that that scream wasn't a scream? It was a moan because of the way she touched you. No, not at all. Because if she was hot, that would have been different. But she wasn't hot. It don't, it don't matter. She moved you. 
<laughs> it moved you. No, you're like, you're, she you're like moved me. Hips. She moved me in pain that she was lucky I didn't fucking flip over and put in a head scissors or something. And well, you couldn't though. That's a, maybe, maybe that's where that moan was from. Is like. You know you couldn't, so you automatically turn to the girl and was like, mm. "Oh no, like, I had the dominant hand available to where I could have done something, but I had to. This is my new one hundred, right? This is yeah. it. I gotta suck it up. I know the pain's gonna come, but I gotta make sure I keep doing it and and, and let them keep stretching me the way they stretch me because it's not gonna get any better. I gotta tell actually, myself that every PT session, it's not gonna get any better if you fucking crying over the pain. Yeah, you should ask for a but guy not, next time and just sit there and say like <clears> that way." If you like, if you scream like that, like a little girl, or you kind of moan, like moan, it's it's like, oh, he was bigger than me. But yeah. when she's like five two, you know, one hundred twenty five pounds, she moves you, and you're like, ah, like then it's like, yeah, yeah, it's um, that's, and that's the a crazy thing moment. is, there's a pretty big dude there, but he hasn't been my PT yet. I still get some, I get two guys here and there. They're not real muscular or anything like that, but you know, they know what they're doing. But yeah, man. I got to redeem my man card. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Go beat up somebody now? You're going to go walk in there with a black guy and black yeah. guy in a fight. I'll show you. I'm a I, man. I am. I am. <laughs> this is for them touching my shoulder. You're going to start going picking up on homeless people and shit. Just going around kicking them. I'm like, I'll show you guys. One, it's gonna be one a, arm jack over here beating up a homeless new, people. A new series of bum fights. <laughs> you, you could probably pass, man. Your hair is getting really curly. Damn! You know, comb it. The beard, you can tell, is like... Your beard looks somewhat similar to mine. No, my beard is comb <laughs> and going down. It has oil in it. Like, it's taken care of. Damn. Your shit does not look like this. Your shit looks like... You, you know how, like, you can tell, like, someone's having, like, a really hard time in life? Like, you can tell mm-hmm. someone's like, man, you're not paying your bills. You're probably, like, you might have just paid your rent, but you don't know next month. And then also, like, you just found out your girl was never been your girl. And then also, it's like, and on top of that, worst case thing, you just now have COVID, so now you're, you're, you're nobody will come to see you. Damn. That's what you look like right now. You look like you're having a hard I, day. I, I feel like you and I could be the poster picture for like a beard oil company. This is the before when you don't use the oil, and then this is the after when you use the oil. Well, it's the like oil. the hair too. It's like everything with you is like, are you okay, man? It's like, if I look that way, people will be like, are you okay? If you come this way, I'm like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I still get the ladies, though. I still get the ladies. <laughs> I don't know, Except man. the one at physical therapy. She fucked me up. I don't want her. I don't want well, her. You're ass. walking around with, like, a shirt open, Miami Vice. You know, you're showing them, you know, Don John. You're just, like, you're energy. Like, these young these young kids, like, what are they? They don't 18, know that. 19? Yeah. So you're just like, oh, They don't wow, know Don John. They don't know. They don't know who that is. You're over there, like, <laughs> with the thing up there, showing them what's up. You're like, wow. I, 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 give you, I give you credit for knowing Miami Vice. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, especially that you're not one that's real fanatic on TV and stuff like that, but that's pretty good. Well, it's like, you know, like I'm mid 80s. So it's like you have an idea what was there, but yeah. I didn't I didn't watch that stuff, but everything that I watched on TV after that was always referencing that because it was such a big impact. Yeah. So. You're but a you can be. You're such a chuggy. <laughs> Again. You're a yeah, like like these kids like, you know, they started talking about like skinny jeans. I'm like, Dude, I don't care, man. Y'all are like y'all hey, y'all can't afford y'all's own clothes. And yeah. then two like those, those dudes, those like little island boys, they're gonna come around like that all the time anyway. So it's like mm-hmm. that represents your generation. I'm good. Like, yep, same yeah, go here, have it, man. Good I see your IP, here. man. I like it. Yeah. So we got that going on. Um, we're starting to decorate the room. I have a couple of things from the military that I want to decorate the room with. Um, my thing from Honduras, both of those gifts. So the one that you gave me, and then the other one that we okay. got from the actual unit. So yeah, I got that coming. It's just one of the ones where it's like. I don't know, man. We're trying to figure out how to put it up here, but it's just those those are the things I want to have. I have on this side. You can't see it, but it's uh, yeah. my vision board. So I like to have yeah. my vision board everywhere, even though I don't pay attention to it. But as I'm walking out the room, the vision board is right there in front of me at all times. Gotcha. So. Awesome, yeah. man. Cool, cool. Well, all right. Anything else, brother? No, man. Until next time, bro. R G I J, baby. All right, man. Later.